guys, thank you so much for being here with me today, spending your time with me. As always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you're not, thank you so, so much. It goes a long way. Anyway, intro over now. Today's video is quite different and I'm so excited to film it. This is me somewhere between college and busking and going back to college. It's a stressful day, but I'm still... Um, very excited to switch up my content on here a bit. Today I'll be walking you through my songwriting process. I've been getting a lot of questions about inspiration and songwriting and creativity on Instagram and on here. Um, so yeah, today is a little how-to guide to songwriting. This one's a um, super scripted video. Like I've never scripted before. There's so much I want to get into this. So. Let's just get started. I've been writing songs since I was 13. This is just a little bit about me before I get into the proper stuff. There'll be timestamps in the description box for you to just click to whatever you feel like uh, listening to. But um, I started writing songs when I was 13. At the time I was learning English though, um, which isn't my native language, so I really properly started writing English songs when I was 15, 16, and honestly, I think I've just been writing the first good songs around a year ago. Um, so it's taken me some time. Obviously, everything I'm saying here today is subjective. Some of it is stuff I'm learning in school, or some um, things that I have that I have researched um, when I was really struggling with writing music. But anyway, there'll be three major parts of this video, inspiration, lyrics and melody, but obviously they're all super interconnected. What I love about songwriting is the stillness of sitting down with a feeling or a moment, diving in it until everything reveals itself. Like seeing the small things in life, witnessing the beauty in everything around us. Especially right now, the days are getting shorter, the mornings are icy cold, everything seems to focus inward. Pumpkin spice <laughs> leaves and slightly frozen pavements, steamed up windows from the heating. I'm really trying to bring focus to the mundane things. It's almost a meditative practice for me at this point. And it's also why I'm changing my content on here. This is the first of the kind of sit down, talky series and I'm really enjoying these kinds of videos. I want to train my eye to see beauty in everything and appreciate every moment in its singularity. To me this is also a practice of becoming a more authentic self, sitting down, kind of being vulnerable to the world a bit more and the things I create and to me this is very difficult, I'm not gonna lie. But I love making videos and this is something I so desperately want to do with my life and my time and my art. So this is me trying to get used to talking to a camera and trying to make slightly better videos each week for you. So let's start with number one, inspiration. I got so many questions on here and on Instagram about what the hell to even write about, what inspires me or what could inspire you. There are some writers that write about stories of other people and that's beautiful and totally valid but for me that never works. I personally, I always end up writing about love, relationships and uh, trauma and wounds because to me it's just become like a healing practice. It's kind of reliving that and then releasing it um, that kind of keeps me happy and keeps me balanced. It's a place for me to sit down with a feeling and, and relive it until it's on the page and it's not inside me anymore. Getting it out of my system or like clearing out my head and my heart. So regardless of me and my experience, here are some tips and tools that I have gathered in the time um, of trying to write music that helped me to get and stay inspired. Number one is I always imagine the finished product, the finished production or the finished demo of what I'm trying to do, even the finished music video of my dreams, regardless of if I have the financial resources to actually make that a reality. I imagine landscape and texture and color, sometimes scent, but especially colors and, and color textures are what inspire me, which is the reason why the number one thing that keeps me inspired is um, Pinterest. I have boards just for inspirational reasons. 
and they can be collages of colors or of landscapes or poetry, anything that I look at, visually look at, and that provokes a sound in my head. Number two would be that I always start with the title. I usually have a very clear vision of just the title, or which is usually part of the chorus or part of the last chord that resolves the whole chorus um, or that resolves the tension or that is the center of what the song is about, like a beautiful line, a song I recently wrote with Fire Without Flame. I was just inspired by the concept, whatever that might be to you, a fire without flame and I knew I wanted that to be in the chorus or a million times which is obviously repeated over and over and over in my last song that came out but I usually have a vision that starts with colors in my head and an actual visual Pinterest board and or a title and usually they would fit together a million times was really inspired by dark ocean seaside bays storms and when you listen to the lyrics that's exactly what you hear number three which should probably be number one because i think it's one of the key elements is actually setting aside a time just to write music whether that be going home for me i would go home to germany for a few weeks if i have the time just to write music with nothing else to do obviously that's not the way that most of us live their life that much free time so having an afternoon a week or something or you stay inside, um, regardless of what's going on in town, just to write music. To me, that's what keeps me fluent. I'm not one of the songwriters that will come home tired and then sit down and spend all night at their instrument, as romantic as that sounds. To me, I need a peaceful, well-rested afternoon, evening to sit down and really be with myself. I'm not one of those there kind of cool artistic people that are kind of wrecks and then they make these amazing things. I need to be in a really good place with time and peace to write music. All right, my audio just cut out again. So this is me saying this for the third time. I hope I'm not forgetting anything this time around. But number four, making your workspace beautiful. Whatever that means to you, this behind me is my workspace. My piano is right here, piano. My little keyboard is right here. And to me, beautiful means flowers and candles and posters and dried flowers, paint brushes. That's what inspires me. That's what I think is a beautiful workspace. But to you, it might be something completely different. It might be a minimalistic approach, really slick black table um, or a way more digital approach uh, than what I'm doing. But I think surrounding yourself with visual beauty will inspire you to be more creative and to sit down and be in this wholesome place with yourself and go to the places that you want to be when you write music or that I try to be when I write music. So on Instagram someone asked me how do I write my songs, lyrics or melody first and to me it's always 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 lyrics. So here's number two, lyrics. When it comes to lyrics, I have one important rule, and that is that I never, ever start writing with an empty page. To me, there's nothing more terrifying than sitting down, being inspired, and staring at an empty piece of paper. So if you take anything away from today's video, it's to please start a journal today. I've been journaling since I was 15, and oh my god, it has changed, it has changed my life. Even if I wasn't a songwriter, even if I was writing stories or poetry or making art in whatever way, journaling is the key, I think, to creating or forming a relationship with yourself. Or well, that's what it has been for me and everyone that I know who keeps a journal. It's such an important act of self-care and being in touch with myself. So what you can see on the screen right now is just the last year of my five year collection. I have a full shelf of journals in Germany. I think I'm going to film a whole video on journaling, but just know this, journaling to me is like calling up myself and being like, how are you doing? What's going on? What do we need to talk about? Like, 
It sounds cheesy, but it really has changed my life. As soon as I started doing it, I kind of worked myself out of this constant existential crisis that I seem to have. Someone read me my star signs just recently, and that's what they said. I live in a constant existential crisis. I'm constantly recreating myself, and journaling is what grounds me when I feel like I don't know who I am again. What am I doing? Who do I want to be? What do I want to be? What do I want to change? Am I happy? What do I need? Journaling is dialogue with yourself and it works. Okay, but back to lyrics. So, I keep pages just with beautiful phrases or beautiful words or title ideas in my journal as well as on my notes app and I even have a WhatsApp group with myself you can do that by creating a group with someone and then kicking them out till you're on your own um, so that when I'm on my phone I can just jot down ideas whichever app I'm on it's always available basically I think over time when I was writing music I learned to never waste an idea because first of all there will be moments when you want an idea to come and, and it's not coming so you need to be able to catch something as soon as it happens but also, that like, short idea that you had in the grocery store might actually lead to something and you never know. So this is the absolute killer for me. Another tool I use is relatedwords.org. It's so much better than just looking up synonyms for what you're trying to say. It will give you, the title suggests, a related word to whatever you're writing about. For example, ocean will lead you to a list of 200 something words that are slightly or directly related to the ocean but it might free up your brain and it might you might read a word and it'll spark a whole new sentence a whole new structure for what you're trying to say but here again i also use pinterest to look up poetry specifically like seasonal poetry or um, nature related poetry because oftentimes in poems i will learn words as a non-native speaker that might like directly influence a sentence or something I've been trying to say and I just couldn't get it because I didn't know the words. So lyrically looking at poetry on Pinterest will lead you down a rabbit hole that might free you up and move your song into a completely new way. So another ritual that helped me clear my system and still is helping me do that every day is called Morning Pages. Morning Pages come from a book called The Artist's Way which I can highly recommend. It really reshaped my relationship with myself as an artist. But regardless, what morning pages mean is that you wake up and before you do anything, you write three pages of whatever it is you're thinking about, you're dreaming about, you're upset about, that you want in life. There are no rules, even if you wake up just to write out, I'm tired, I don't wanna go to work. Whatever it is in your head, you will release it in the morning. And for myself, I find out that I get out of bed after writing and I already have a clear mindset for the day. But I'm writing one page every morning because after doing it for one and a half years, I found that for me, this is the only way to really keep this a daily ritual. And maybe it's the same for you. Obviously, again, everything I'm saying here are completely subjective things. I'm not wise, I'm quite young, but maybe they will help you. There's no right way to write music. I know so many songwriters now and we all have completely different ways. Um, to get inspired and come up with lyrics, so don't take me too seriously. I just wanted to get this out um, and I come across as someone who thinks that they, I have all the answers because I clearly don't. There's so much, so much I, I want to get better at and that I'm, I'm really struggling with in music and in songwriting. So I've learned that the songs that I resonate with most lyrically are the songs that are just brutally, painfully honest and like detailed perfect little time capsules and they sound completely subjective and the story that they're telling and that's something that I'm still learning being unafraid as a songwriter and going to the dark places and then telling a story to strangers that is painful and raw and honest. All right that was all I wanted to say about writing lyrics today so let's go to number three melody. So like I said, usually my songs will start with a lyrical idea or a phrase or a title that I want to include in the song, but sometimes I will just sit down with my instrument and mumble along vowels and words 
to find a good melody, a top band melody for the vocal. This is a strategy that I know many people use to even find a good hook to base the song around or just to find a good key that works with your voice or chord progression that will inspire you to come up with the lyrical story around it. Because obviously chords and music has textures and colors and feelings as well. And maybe for you it might work better to switch it around and feel the chord progression first and then write the story to it. I would argue that most songwriters out there have around a thousand voice memos on their phone just of them mumbling phrases in a public bathroom or humming melodies in a grocery store or waiting in line for something. It's so important to always be ready to catch inspiration when it happens. Maybe the whole point of this video was just saying that probably what will work best for you is creating a system to capture beauty inspiration, words, phrases, melody, whatever it is, as soon as it happens. For me, that is in the form of a journal and morning pages and a WhatsApp chat and a notes app or a Pinterest board. Whatever it is for you, it's like catching a butterfly, going into nature in a beautiful field and waiting and being patient. And when it happens, you need to take it and take everything you can get and make something even more beautiful. I could genuinely talk about this all day long and filming this I had so many ideas of what I could do, invite people or make a second series or another Q&A about things related to songwriting or making art. So please, if you're still watching this, it would mean the world to me if you left me comments about how you felt about this type of video. It's the first kind of how-to guide me trying to get a bit better at filmmaking and also a bit more natural at talking to my camera because it's so very cringy and awkward to me. So let me know what you think um, of, of the job I'm doing. I'm, I'm really appreciating you still watching this. So leave me a comment if you want about whatever. I hope you're doing well. I wish you an amazing rest of your morning, afternoon, noon, night, wherever you are on this beautiful planet. And as always, love and light, and I'll see you soon.